but the the we we do use a lot of those those branches and stuff um, when we're we're doing our deploys. I mean that's that's part of uh, one of the variables, right? That that we're able to select uh, when we put the stuff together, right? And and uh, we've been able to do it through through run deck and and the ability to pass it to the instance and have the instance pass it back as we're doing this complicated. I I, I was talking about architecting this stuff before. Uh, you know, in in the paradigm that that Arc Compose tries to to uh, fit itself inside, right? We've we've kind of set the boundaries for ourselves, and we say it should work with all of these things, right? So we've done this this really cool work on you know being able to reboot the instance, call uh, run Arc Compose rules on itself, and 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 all these cool things locally on the instance. But we can't forget about using Rundeck as our automation front end, right? That's that's super handy when it comes to injecting some of the compositional enterprise infrastructure secrets into the runs that we we perform um, on on these instances especially the ones that we maintain right um, so what Jack's done for a lot of these things that we've been talking about is he's been writing equivalent API calls out to run deck to to have it run what we need it to run on the instance if it's in the compositional enterprises infrastructure rather than having it run ro locally on itself. So I'm gonna let Jack talk. Um, today he wants to talk about the the API of Rundeck and how he's used that to accomplish this this dichotomy of stuff being able to run locally, but also how do we how do we call Rundeck so that we can have credentials, so we can have secrets and stuff in our maintained infrastructure absolutely and what an intro uh, what an intro uh wow so i'm going to be pretty short here and quick on this api section but a lot of what andrew said is basically he covered it very well and i kind of want to go into more details on it but essentially what we have is on every portal instance we're making calls to either the local instance as he mentioned or to out to run deck so if you're on our infrastructure you can run most of your jobs from the local instance or you can make a call out to run deck and run deck will run that from there and what we end up doing is injecting a bunch of keys in and passwords in and all this fun stuff for portals to say to itself okay look i'm able to make calls out to run deck i'm able to do run jobs from basically a shared infrastructure rather than my own so i don't have to die and you know kill my resource usage every time now what it ends up doing is of course it's going to go you know when we say we're going to run a compositional role it's going to act on that instance but we're calling ansible not from the c commands receivable on the local instance we're calling it from the run deck api which is in fact running it from itself out to the instance but you have to ask yourself what's this api what's an api i don't know how technically inclined most of our user base is uh but with us talking about non-technically savvy earlier basically an api is uh, a funny word for application programming interface it essentially means i don't have to point and click through the run deck application i i can just write in code hey i want to make a call out to this endpoint which will will do this and the most popular are obviously going to be jobs executions projects but to get started with the api it starts at authentication you have to who are you right and we talked about ecls last week and user authentication last week who are you are you allowed to run this right and you can write a whole front end if you want and that's essentially what we've done with portal for run deck instead of giving out local accounts for our run deck instance and an ACL policy on those users that's probably just going to be monstrous. What we've done is we've taken Portal and said, hey, look, you're going to be able to run certain jobs, certain executions from your instance, but I made it, <laughs> we made it easy for you by putting it a, a, a nice UI, you know, a nice user interface in front of the API saying, hey, look, we want you to be able to reach you know, if you're having issues, we want you to be able to run in our Compose instance. We want you to be able to restart a service. We want you to be able to stop a service now we, Now that we have that available. We want you to make, you know, we want to allow you to remove services, add services, whatever you want to do, that's fine. But 
I'm going to make it easy for you rather than just making, you know, handing you run deck information saying, Hey, here you go. I'm going to make it easy and say, Hey, look, here's your simple navigation. Let me just add it in portal and you can walk, you can walk through it the way you want. Right. Yeah. In, instead of saying you have to go to our infrastructure and log into this totally separate service with totally different username and password. Right. We're going to let you do your thing on your server and you can use our infrastructure and uh, that's done via an API token. Now to get a little bit technically savvy, cause I, I am personally interested in this. So like run deck uses an API token rather than regular auth, like a username and password. Right. That's correct. So I really like that. The token aspect of it, because you have to log in to get your token. Right. And, I won't get picky, but you can do it from the API if you have that access to create authentication tokens, but I don't want to dive into that right now. Uh, essentially, what you have to do is log in, and then so it authenticates well, to, says, all right, to, to, here, to here you To cut are. you off at the pass there, yeah. like, we're not doing this, and we're not asking really anyone to do this, correct? What do you mean, create authentication tokens? Correct. No, what I've included here in okay. the API is how we, we have it. So even when you rotate keys, which you've done, we've done, that what that looks like for us is essentially what I'm going to walk through here, right? No one has to walk. This authentication stuff I included is nice if you you yourself want to use the API. If you want to sign up and for your instance, if you run deck as a service you selected and you want to do kind of this front end automation, you want developers to have an API available to them, You, this is how you would grant them access without giving them full admin. Now, most instances, if you give them that password, please don't share that. Uh, they, this is how they would, in fact, get a token. But the authentication's done. You sign in, you hit your profile, and then in your instance, there's a little user API token with a plus next to it. And then what it's going to do is a little module is going to pop up and it's going to say generate new token you get to name it you have to assign the username associated with that token so you can in fact create them for other users now if you're an admin you can only create it for admin and below if you only have if you don't have an acl attached with your user for access to the api you're not going to be able to create it for this which i have in fact tested um but under the user is where you get the roles and that's where kind of your acls come into play that's where you get to say, hey, what 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 does this user need? And so what Andrew and I have is with the ACL, you can select, basically, for us, you select the project, the jobs, and then what, I'll say what, uh, I hate to say access again, what, what permissions, permissions you have on that job, essentially. So you can, uh, and this is where I put CRUD, create, update, read, and destroy. Uh, so those are kind of the four rules per se so what we have now the acls go you can run jobs and there's i think six or seven but with the roles what you're able to do is as that user you create your token you assign yourself so we have the read run role which we have on every instance rather than giving our <laughs> rather than giving our portal instances admin rights to every single instance and just waiting for someone to just pop the server we've given them just read run on a handful of jobs across quite in fact just one project as i have learned now and run into issues with uh and then at the bottom there you have the expiration time which you can set to delay so we have ours at 45 days so after 45 days you will never see this on your instance for us we rotate keys it's just good practice it's something we do kind of out of the box we rotate keys every 45 days at the 30 day mark is when we rotate them. So something just to keep in mind as you create these API keys, because you really, <laughs> please don't go in and just set a null date. <laughs> Let it just go forever. That's just not good. It's now not you, like anyone's going to get it, but just yeah, please don't and, do that. And you can't go in and, and manage them. You can't go in and delete them or, or, or change them if you need to. But I mean, it's that's, that's going to be best best hygiene right is is create with the uh, the least amount of privileges that you need to give it and create it to expire like those are yep. those are two real good security postures to to adopt and the one thing on top of that i'll note is that 
when you generate a token, it displays once. Mm -hmm. So if you have to generate two, you have to generate two. If it if you miss it, you close out the page, just generate another because it's not gonna it's it's not going to appear again. Um I feel like I've talked quite a bit on the roles, the users. There are two available ways to run uh well two available output formats from the API. There's... If you're stuck in the 90s, XML is available. Um, if you were more technically inclined from today's age, you're familiar with REST, JSON is also available, and we use the JSON format. Mm -hmm. And then there are... I included three popular API commands if you are technically inclined and want to check those out. So I just link if, them right if, back. If, if someone goes to check those out, what should they expect given that this is a CRUD interface if you want to kind of expand on on given those Cre three commands what 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 is crud really going to the make API, available to API, them? api commands uh essentially with crud you're creating a resource you're updating resources you're i mentioned it reading resources and deleting them so, so basically with the jobs what we do is create we don't really go in and you can delete jobs you can i more or less call them canceling you can cancel a job. We don't really wipe it from the record per se, but what you do is you would submit like a post request and you'd go in and, all right, I'm going to start a run compositional role. And then that usually pops back out in execution, which is why I include included the execution as the next one there from the execution. What you can do is then just read all the output from that, which is what we do on your portal instances. When stuff's kind of going wrong, uh, you want, output from a certain data point you want to see what services are healthy what's not the executions where you get all that information you run the job it gives you an execution you pull from the execution all of that now all of this is under a project of course so you're going to have to you have to scope it right at some point you have to say all right well where's the job and most of it's uuids but the project you have to include there as a hey i want to go to the r compose project slash I want to do run a compositional role or get the health check as a job. And then from there, you grab the executions. So I included these three. They are definitely the three that I use the most just because jobs are so prevalent in run deck execution is just going to give you all that data from the output. And then a project is really just that base kind of starting point from, all right, what, what do I have available to me? And, and like we've been harping on, I mean, this is kind of the documentation of how we use the service. There's there's a lot more to Rundeck and its API. Um, it is obviously, uh, as, as we've said before, a project that's written on top of its API. It's a front end written totally. on top of its API. Uh, so totally. almost anything that you can do with, with Rundeck, you'll, you'll be able to do with the API. Uh, as well, and and that's what we like to see too. I mean, we we like to uh, give ourselves the ability to create the runners, you know. And I, I know that's not something we've talked about on the podcast a whole lot, right? But scripts that we write uh, usually are going to be interacting with the, an API of some sort. Um, so if if you're you know not one of the technically inclined or you know technologically oh, you can't say it like savvy that, people yeah, yeah. you know if if you just want something done if 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 you're looking and and say hey i have this thing that i do five times a week right and we can go talk about tech debt but you know if, if if you're finding yourself doing something manual you think it could be automated right that's where we start looking at the api of a given project and say hey is this something that's scriptable is this you know is this a a, a known input known output known execution state we can we can start working through the ability to to automate that you know seeing that we have this experience right with with going through and and touching a lot of these apis right that is that is certainly something that that we're available to now you can you can contact us through our compose.com um that's going to be the the easiest place or if you are having an instance with us you know shoot us an email uh we have our our support email or reach out to us um however you best like to uh to get in touch with us 